clapping to Jesus. We are clapping to Jesus. We are clapping to Jesus. So don't get tired. We are clapping to Jesus. Amen. special Sunday and you all look like Sunday Amen, Amen. very beautiful Amen. and we have some twins here among us Penny and Kakra at the back the Kakra I learned is Sandra Sister Sandra and the Penny I learned it was Sister Ella Amen God bless you, you guys look wonderful we thank God for today who knows what this week represents in a calendar of Church of Pentecost. We are the example of Christ. That's our theme. Let's clap for Brother L. Amen. Whenever I say no questions will flow. Mama AC, this is Missions Week. You remember? Missions Week. Uh, I've tried not to teach, but uh, I don't want to teach. I'll preach today. Whatever happens, put my feet down. I'll preach. Amen. <laughs> It's Missions Week. Missions Week. We thank God for today. There was a man who brought Church of Pentecost to Ghana. What was his name? Oh, if you raise your hands up, I won't call you. <laughs> Sister Sandra? Makiam. James Makion. Amen. Amen. Reverend James Makion. I'm going to talk uh, a bit about him. A little bit about him from there we proceed on and what i'm going to read will ginger your spirit to also do more than what he did amen, amen. reverend james mckeon was born in september the 12th 1900 in northern ireland he was brought up as a christian and in a christian home so it's good for us also to bring our children up in christian homes but nobody knows what jeffrey or what is his name? Benny will do in the future. So let's raise our kids up. Amen. Amen. And at the age of 19, he became converted through a ministry of Reverend, Reverend Robert Mercer at the Four Square Gospel Alliance in Northern Ireland. He was baptized and together with that time, her girlfriend that he later on married. Her name was Sophia, who later became his wife. And he received the Holy Spirit spirit baptism later. Reverend Macchion left school at the age of 11, but Sophia, however, got educated to advanced age of 19 and studied dressmaking for two years and became fully qualified seamstress. Reverend Macchion assisted his father on a farm and later became a tram driver. You see, from a child dropped out of school, he helped the parents become a tram driver. But whilst all this was going on, that man had a vision. Say vision. 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 vision is different from a dream. In some time to come, I will explain those things to you. But that man had a vision. His vision was to establish and help a church to grow. And also to announce the good news of God's kingdom. That is his vision. His vision was to announce God's kingdom and to believe in testimony to people about God's power. This man switched his African, sorry, his native European mode to African mode. What do I mean by that? He lived and as African in many ways, even his meals in Ghana, those days were prepared in the Ghanaian local way. Now as a matter of fact, he drank from the well that was that close to his house, a Buddha Museum. If you are here, you go to Ghana, you feel shy even to drink from the cup they drink from. But this man left everything behind in Europe and lived in Africa in the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes will bite him, the house flies will be going through the eyes and stuff, but he persisted on because of his vision that he had. So your vision will always drive you to the point where you achieve your aim. Amen. Amen. His ministry also involved extensive walking on foot across streams and rivers. Nowadays, we have cars and trams, bikes everywhere. But how far do you take the gospel? Makion walked from Asaman Kesin. He walked on foot to villages preaching the gospel to enlighten God's kingdom. But who was he actually? 
was very honest man, very gentle, very affable and respected man of God. As a condiment and a skillful leader, he combined humility with firmness to nurture the Church of Pentecost to a height of success. If it's not but what he has done, the Church of Pentecost will not have been as he said now. Now, the Church of Pentecost is over 90 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God will use somebody here also to prove just PIWC spirit across the whole of Europe. Amen. Amen. By his wisdom, God, that God granted to him, he chose a band of selfless disciples who pioneered the church from hard time to this very glorious day. Reverend James also and always insisted on self-reliance as against soliciting for financial assistance from abroad. So when he came to Ghana, he used the local people. He touched their hearts for them to help the donation, offerings, through that the church expanded. He didn't pick up a telephone call and called Northern Ireland to bring him money. So when sometimes we stand here to ask for money, it's not coming into my pocket. You also are doing your part to progress God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. In 1982, Reverend McKeon decided to hand over the mantle to the leadership of African minister. He explained that the age was telling effect on him and that he, it was time for him to retire. He was getting old. So it's my prayer that any one of us, as we have begun so, uh, with the tender age, we grow old with God. Amen. Amen. He left later to the shores of uh, the UK, and every time he found out how the church was progressing. In 1984, Reverend McClellan paid his last visit to Ghana. Within this time, he officiated the sword cutting ceremony of the extension work of the church's headquarters in Accra. Soon after he visited the country, he led for good to the Northern Ireland, where he died. But before he left, he said, You are all my witness. My hands are clean. If somebody can tell you that it's me, he was very honest. Amen. Amen. And on 4th May 1989, he went to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So how many years was Matthew <coughs> When was he born? I said it. 1900. 1900. And he died in 1989. How many years? 99 years. I pray, it's above my wish, that all of us live even higher and more than he lived. But he lived with God throughout. He didn't stop. He quit school, but he didn't quit following Christ. It's my prayer that all of us we are going to do the same. Amen. Amen. This week is our missions week. There are so many people that have been posted across the globe to establish churches. Uh, around the week, presiding posted on our page. Most of you watch it, if I'm not mistaken. The video how the church is doing in Ghana, how many churches have also been established in different parts of uh, the country and also different parts of the world. How you and I, our system is needed. Some of them, they worship under trees. Some of them under broken uh, or unroofed uh, buildings. But still, the work of God is prevailing. You and I will sit comfortably in headset. <laughs> Say headset. Headset. If you have watched our, uh, our preaching last week or our video last week, I titled it The Headset Concept. See, when I came, I pick up a chalk, I begin to teach. I like it. It's a good way to start from somewhere. And we are not going to remain here. Amen. 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 So as Brother Eric rightly said, the theme for our mission speak is Christ, our example in our generation. Amen. Amen. He says Christ came into this world with a motive. Not only to die, but also to proclaim God's kingdom. So one of his mission statements that he said was, let me go and preach the good news to the nearby villages. For this reason, I was sent. He proclaimed God's kingdom wherever he went. Amen. Please, can somebody take his Bible with me and let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Or start from the 18, if you are there. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. 
I'll try if you are please you can read. Your mother yet? Who is there? Mm -hmm. Mr. James is there. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses eighteen. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, mm -hmm. not including their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors mm -hmm. for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. Amen. 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 He said, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God, through Jesus, reconciled us to himself. What does that mean? Once upon a time in the book of Genesis, chapter 5. Uh, sorry, chapter 3. Adam transgressed against God. And that time God separated himself from man. There was no more a cordial relationship between man and God anymore. God's spirit left man, and the Bible says, man died. Amen. Amen. So when you read the Bible, the Bible says, you who were once died in your transgressions, it means when Adam sinned, he died. Amen. Amen. Last time somebody interviewed me and it was on Facebook and on YouTube as well. And I told him that we are not made in the image of God. He said, what do you mean? The Bible says we are made in the image of God. I said, yes, but it's not true. You look at me with this kind of, what, what is wrong with this man? I said, yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes I say certain things, if I don't tell you where it comes from, you might not believe me. But the same Bible said it in Genesis chapter 5. The Bible said God made man in his image. And likeness, as we all know, right? Yeah. Good. Who was the first man that God made in his image? Okay. Adam. Adam. was perfect. Everything was correct. But one day, God said, don't eat from the tree. Did Adam obey God? No. no. So he did it and he died. Because God said, the day you eat from the tree, you shall surely die. die. Did Adam die? No. He, hey, yes. <laughs> he died. No. There are three ways of dying. Uh -huh. The first dying is when God's spirit leaves you. We all here, we have God's spirit inside of us. Yes. The second death is when you go away from God's presence. Mm -hmm. God kicked them out of the garden. So he died for the second time. The third death is when your spirit leaves your body. You become comatose. You die. So the first day, Adam ate the fruit. He disobeyed God. God's spirit left him. But he lived 930 years. So Adam was a walking dead. There are some people you see on the street, they are dead. They dress nice from Zara, suit on, wash, but they are all walking dead. What am I saying? They don't have God's spirit. Amen. You understand up to this point? Good. In Genesis chapter 5, the Bible says, everything that God made produced after his own kind. Pear produced after his own kind, pear. Apple produced after his own kind, apple. Did Adam produce? Did Adam produce? Yeah. What was the first production of Adam? Okay. The second one? So it was after his own kind. Were they living or they were dead? They were dead. You understand it now, eh? So did God made us in his image? Come back to me. Why are you using the word but? <laughs> So originally, he made that his own image. Yeah. But the moment Adam fell, Adam died. And Adam produced after his kind. Dead people, dead people, dead. So the, the baby you born to is dead yeah. to God. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we are not dead. Because the Bible says now, what I just read, Christ has reconciled us back to God. We are no more dead. We have God's spirit now. No. So those who do not have God's spirit, they are dead. That's it. So Second Corinthians said that all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself because what Adam did, we were alienated from God, but through Christ, then we have been reconciled back unto Him. That's why when I was teaching, I mentioned the blood. Amen. Good. So, Paul is saying here that Christ has given us also a ministry of reconciliation. The word reconciliation means to bring somebody to yourself through favor. You, what you have done, I'm supposed to kill you. But I'm not putting that death on you. You understand? 
When you go to the United States of America, they have what they call the death penalty. When somebody kills someone, they will inject him with poison, and then you see the poison is flowing through the person, and he dies. It's a law. Good. But picture this. Somebody raped a small child of five years, and he killed her. This man was in electric chair to die. The law says that, even the, uh, Leviticus says what is there, that Bible says, when somebody shed a man's blood, by his blood who should he be shed, kill for kill, period. That's the law. It's a, every country is like that. But this man was on, was on the electric chair, he was about to die. And Jesus stepped in and said, I respect your law. But don't kill this man. Kill me instead. That was you and me. You were supposed to have died as Adam did. But Christ took our place and died for us. And after that, he gave us his spirit. So he reconciling him as to himself means we are, he is bringing us back to Christ. Amen. And when he did that, he has also given you and me a ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? It means that you and I should also go and tell others what Christ has done for us. But are we selfish these days? Yes. Christians have become so selfish, we don't share. It's not you borrowing your dress to your friend. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not you giving what you have to a friend. That's not what I'm talking about. But the gift of eternal life that we have. How many times do we proclaim this message to somebody else? He has made us and given us a ministry of reconciliation. The verse 20 says, Now then, we are the ambassadors for who? Christ. Who is ambassador? An ambassador is a representative of a country in another country. For example, here in Brussels, we have the Ghanaian ambassador there. What is his name? Who, what is his name? Let's say his name is Dr. James. Okay. When Dr. James sits in his office, he represents the whole of Ghana. Alright? So even at all, if somebody want is chasing you to kill you, the moment you enter that compound, you are in Ghana. <laughs> oh yes, that's how it is. If anything happens, they are chasing you, enter that compound. The moment you cross the street, you enter the building, you are in Ghana. Nobody can touch you. And that is what class has made you to be. You are an ambassador. If somebody wants to go to Ghana with a Belgian passport, what does he do? Take a visa. You go take a visa from where? The ambassador. You go there and say, ambassador or embassy or whatever you call it. I want to visit your country, Ghana. He said, really? Do you have one test to Ghana? Yeah. How much money do you have with you? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Fill these forms. You have to declare who you are before I allow you to go to Ghana. So we are not small people here. You are giving somebody a visa to go to heaven. You. Is that it? We are representing Christ. Where is Christ? He's in heaven. Or God is in heaven. And we are representing him as an ambassador here on earth. So that means our life cannot be just Zoma life. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm not finished that. When you go to that embassy office and you see the ambassador there, dressed in tattered jeans and uh, pet here, and school there, how will you even greet him? You, you pass by him and I'm looking for the Ambassador, <laughs> are you just passing? This one? You see that? Whilst you are going, your mind tells you the person is dressed in suit and stuff. That's the mentality you have by all means. That's how the world should see us. We are ambassadors. But even our cleaning style, this qualifies us to be ambassadors. The way we speak, it disqualifies us. When you go to the embassy, the embassy speaks in Ghana, we speak official language, English, and now the tree has become almost uh, 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 official language in Ghana now. And when you go to the embassy's office and he says, are you a Ghanaian? You say, yes. Oh, I doubt. <coughs> Which Ghana language do you speak? <laughs> and you say, uh, I speak tree. Oh, that's nice. Now, we did the say. He immediately changes the language to establish your identity. Right? And if he asks you what language do you speak, you say, um, um, you speak three, uh, mm, uh, uh, okay, you speak Fante. He will mention at least three major languages. The moment you can't speak any one of them, he accepted that you are not a Ghanaian. It's true. 
He represents the country. He knows his country more than you who are coming there. That's how Christ has made us. We are all heaven citizens. We are representing Christ here on earth. So our mission is to bring people to Christ through one, our lifestyle. Two, the way we speak. Three, the knowledge of the word of God. Because if I am preaching to you to repent from your sins, and you see me to be a drunkard, would you believe whatever I say? No. You wouldn't. Why? My lifestyle does not portray who I am. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, as ambassadors of Christ, let everything that we do, let everywhere that we go, portray who Christ has wanted us to be. Because he has given you and I a ministry of reconciliation. So as the theme sound, as Brother Eric said, Christ is our example. If somebody foots you, before you foot him back, ask yourself, what would Christ have done? I teach you this our last time, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So the person you are representing, what would he have done? Nanado is not here in Belgium, but when you go to the embassy's office, his presence is there. Right? So anything you want, going to ask the person sitting there, you are, the person is giving it to you in the name of who? Nanado, the president. So you being the ambassador of Christ, you doing something to someone, you are doing it in the name of Christ that you are representing. So we should watch out the things we do and the things we say. Otherwise, we cannot expand God's mission. Amen. Amen. When I was reading the story about James Lachion, his vision was to expand God's kingdom. And I also said that Jesus Christ's main motive of coming here was to bring God's kingdom here on earth. So you and I, what we have to do is even greater. Say greater. greater. And I can do all things. Say it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me read something for you here and I'll bring the message to an end very shortly. First Corinthians chapter 15, the message that God gave for my spirit this morning. He said, Moreover, brethren, First Corinthians 15, verse 1, I'm reading down was. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand. Listen carefully, yeah? Moreover, brethren, who is speaking here? Who wrote the book of Corinthians? Paul. I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand. There are some gospels that when somebody preaches to you, you can't sit down, you will stand. It will ginger you. In our African or Ghana, or let me say in Ashkan, Ashantis do that. There are some names when somebody mentions you stand up. My grandma will say, Ah, but this one, I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> she didn't know it. <laughs> the moment you mention that person's name, you stand up as a reference to that person. Because that person might have done so good or so better for you that you want to reveal his name. Now, Paul is saying that. When you preach that gospel to you, you don't sit down. Be by all means for stand. There are some churches that have follow-up teams. People don't come to church, but they don't check the message they preach. There are some messages being when I come to your church and I'm here, I won't come there anymore. I won't come. There are some messages when I hear ah, I will stand up on my feet and it will it will move me. Pierre the Brisi in uh, uh, Antwerp, we have a song there. The wilderness is now where full full ground. I like that song so much. I thought I was the only one who liked it. <laughs> one of my fellow elders, Elder Clinton, he said, Ah, and, bro, uh, and when I hear this song, something is doing me. Something is doing me. You see, when you hear the song, something is choking you up. That's what Paul is saying. There's a gospel that when you hear, you can't sit, you will stand. And that's what he has given to you and me. The verse 2 says, But which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. So the gospel is meant for you to believe it. And it will save you. And what gospel was he talking about? For I delivered to you first of all that which I received that Christ died for our sins. That's the first part of the gospel. If you are an ambassador of Christ, you are representing Christ, 
then you must know your work. Your work is also to deliver people from the bondage of darkness and translate them into the kingdom of Christ. Then what are you going to tell them? The first line is how Christ died according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And then he rose again. There are three things. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Christ did not die for anything. But he died to save you and I. And when he was buried, what happened? He exchanged your place from hell to heaven. When he resurrected, what did he do? He resurrected with you, with him in Christ. So whilst Christ is now in heaven, sitting at the right hand side of God, you are inside of him. So if Satan want to kill you, he should come and kill God first. Take Christ out of God, kill Christ before he can get to you. Amen. So you must know who you are. You are not a small child sitting here. You are somebody, Papa. So recognize who you are in him. Because if Christ is not a loser, you can never be a loser. If he is a victor, you are a victor. If he is always successful, you are also successful. You have been made to be his ambassador. Amen. Amen. Let me ask this question and I close. Please can you give me my handkerchief? Who knows when Christ will come? Wow. Did you say only God? You know. No, we won't. When? The day he will be angry, he will come. No. Uh -huh. Jeff, can you help us? Who knows when the end will come? Yes? Um, in the Bible. Somewhere in the Bible. Somewhere in the Bible. Yeah, I, I don't know the many verse. God said, no one knows the day or the hour. Okay, sit down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, shoot. You and I, we know. We know. Mm -hmm. It can come today. No, not that. Not that. And we determine when the end should come. Oh. How? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell you, anytime you see me standing, take a pen and write because I have it. It's a secret. Should I reveal it? Yeah. Yes. Matthew 24. Let's go there. Matthew. Don't forget. He has given us a ministry of reconciliation. And I told you earlier on that 24, 24 verses 14. Let, let, you, you see that? And watch your Bible closely. If you are there, say, I'm there. Are you there? Macron had a vision. His vision was to present the kingdom of God to Africa, to Ghana. And when he says he came, he said, let me go by to the nearby villages, Mark chapter 4, and go and preach the kingdom of God to them. For that is why I was sent. That was his mission statement. Are you there? Matthew 24, 14. I'm reading from verse 13. He said, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Verse 14. When the end will come, is here. And this gospel of the kingdom I repeat and this gospel not any other gospel but this gospel not the gospel of I bless you I bless you no not that one this gospel of what of what of of the kingdom is that in the Bible yes good Makia went to Ghana with the same vision but when this gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world as a witness, follow the sentence, after that has been done, what will happen? Then, 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 after what? After preaching, the gospel of the kingdom has been preached the whole world as a witness, then the end will come. So don't tell me you don't know when the end will come. You know it. And now, are you preaching the gospel of the kingdom? No. There is no coming. You are determined when the end comes. And why this said about no one knows the day or the hour? Hold on. Explain it to me. No one knows when you are going to preach the kingdom to the end of the world. No one knows. Are you going to do that today? No. That's it. So Christians, we have power. We have power. He said until the kingdom. So, Makiam coming to Ghana those years, I'm here, 
When Makia went to Ghana with that vision, he expanded into Ghanaians. Take God's kingdom knowledge. We received it. Church of Pentecost was born. It didn't stay there. It has now been spread out. It's in Togo, Burkina Faso, Sierra Leone, Dakar. If you watch the movie, have you watched it? Japan. Japan, if it is in Japan now, they are trying to build one in Japan. What is it? It's expanded. God's kingdom is expanded as a witness to all nations in the whole world. After that one has been done, then the end will. Don't tell me you don't know where the end will come. So it depends on me and you. You know that WhatsApp is now rampant now. You know what is happening? I mean, when I do a video, I don't keep it. I send it. My friend in Malaysia called. He said, oh, yes, I'm in the It's a switch Malaysia. Somebody in South Africa took it. Somebody in North America took it. So when you have the gospel on your phone, share it. Because you and I, we determine when the end will come. You know, Sandra, are you getting something? All right. Mm. So, brothers and sisters, Christ has made us an ambassador. Mm. We are to reconcile the world to Himself through the gospel of the kingdom. In God's kingdom, there is no loser there. In God's kingdom, there is no sickness there. We have become the newspaper that the world is reading. So when you take the newspaper in the morning, telegraph, uh, the morning, uh, the stem, but lazy the messenger. See, lazy what he bit of the dark, of the dark, history of what an oak. Ma as messenger, you name as a grant, what could the dark find you have lazy? If people take you as a newspaper, what could they read from you? Can they read positive things? Can they read that this is why you are a fighter? You like fighting too much. I don't like you. No. You are an ambassador. You represent somebody, not just a human being on earth, you represent who? Christ. Christ. So if somebody foots you, talk bad about you, before you give a reply back, say to yourself, I am an ambassador. You don't deserve my anger. Please back off. You understand what I'm saying? Then you place yourself in a higher level of, of, of office. The person when is coming, oh, you can offer it, because he's going to an ambassador. Tell your sister, I am an ambassador. Yes. So be careful how you treat me. Because tomorrow you'll be in my office. Ah, amen. Good. The last point I'm bringing here across is there are places that you and I cannot go. There are some people in Madagascar. You know Madagascar? Yeah. When you take African map, that's more small island. Of it. Madagascar. The chain is being built there. But sad enough, they need people like you and me to help them. If they tell Nana, Nana, and Prince, go to Madagascar tomorrow and exactly pay the pay the bridge with them, will you go? You won't go. You don't even know that even Afghanistan, <laughs> Pakistan, yeah. where it's easier, Iran, easy for you to be beheaded. The church is there. Last time, one friend of mine he posted onto our page how the disciples of Christ. They killed them one by one. In fact, it was it was tough. And in one of them, James, uh, John, they put him in a one. But he didn't die. Yes. But from you, they sold him into two. One of them, they put him at the back of a horse and dragged him on the floor until uh, what takes And one was crucified. Upside. Crucified upside down. That was uh, uh, Peter. On an S cross. No, they died horribly. But if they went through that so that you and I could be reconciled to Christ, then what are you doing? Somebody put his life on the danger so that the scriptures today we are reading will get to you. What are you doing? So if you can't do that, your substance can do that. Exchange your time, your sweats with your substance. Help them. Those up there, the pastors, they sometimes, he, the one I, what I was listening to this one, he said, they wouldn't even have a place to stay. They live in people's compound houses. So many things were happening. Even food to eat was a problem. All because they want to represent Christ as an ambassador. We have, we have it good there. Eh? From the place they kick us out, that uh, where we were, um, Rubinstein, uh, Rubinstrat, it was a very fine place. We are now in this classroom. It's, it's, it's better. 
But when you look at the place where those people where they are serving God and yet they are happy, God is wonderful. It takes you and I to help them so that the kingdom will be expanded. And after it has reached everywhere as a witness, then the end will come. So if you want Jesus to come tomorrow, next week, you don't want Jesus to come? No. Oh. You don't want Jesus to come tomorrow? Yes. Who want Jesus to come? Yes. Nobody! Hey! Yes. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> now me, sorry. Comfort. You don't want this says to come next week? Yes. Too early. <laughs> Why? Obi David Kao, I said. I said, 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 Prince, you want to come next week? No. <laughs> praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you want Jesus to come in this March. March. This month, March. Oh. Okay. Then why are we coming to church every day and every day? Why? Oh. Yes, yeah, Sister Sandra. I'm shifting from preaching to teaching now. I have that spirit. I don't know why, but all the same. Eric, you want this to come in April? Yes. Okay. Oh. I'm ready. All right. So that's why you are not preaching the gospel. Amos. Enoch, right? Sorry. sorry. Amos. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, so, you have not finished your work. No, no. That's you know, all. Yeah. You, I'm talking about you. For me, for me. Yes. I have not finished this work, so I have to do it before. Okay, okay, so when will you begin? <laughs> now, good one. Let's clap for him. <laughs> he has said it. So the Bible says we are going to give an account of what you have done. Which account? He has given you a task to perform as an ambassador. How many verses did you issue to people to get to heaven? And how many people do you sign your signature for them to be kicked to hell? You are going to give it an account. Because the embassy, not that when you went there, they just give you the visa and go. Some of them, they reject them. You agree with me, right? So how many have you rejected to go to hell? How many have you signed for them to go to heaven? Not account. But if, if the teachers have not come today, or tomorrow, you will meet him. Yes. The ambassador who was there at um, Brussels in uh, Muhammad's time, right? When change of government took place, where is he now? He went back to Ghana, right? That's it. A new one is there now. Am I right? Yes. New one is there now. So the question is if Jesus does not come, you will go to him. What account are you going to give? The Lord, I was representing you as an ambassador, reconciling the world to you. I was able to get five souls. God said, well done. You good and faithful servant. Come and take your position here. Would you like to hear this? Yes. Then from today, know that you have a task to perform. Say, I have. I have. I have. A task. A task. To perform. Amen. Amen. I, am I am the ambassador for Christ. My aim, My aim is, to is to bring people to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be on your feet. You're going to preach. Okay.